I'm just going to stay board and do a object drawing of two objects and we're going to apply tone to the picture to make it look more 3D. So we probably all know by now that, that the best way to make something look 3D is by applying tone. And how we can turn something like a circle like this into a 3D sphere, as we can see, is by shading and shading using different varieties of tone to make the object look 3D. We should be able to tell by our object which direction light is coming from. So is the light coming from the left or from the right? The area that standing out the most, the light is going to hit it the most. And as the object recedes or goes further away, the area is going to be darker or in shadow. I'm going to draw, boys, today these two um, pep, these two um, tomatoes. And I suppose this looks like an extremely simple drawing to draw, but I suppose we know ourselves that doing something like this isn't as easy as it looks. To draw um, tomatoes or to draw a circle, number one, one of the big mistakes we often make is to just try and draw the circle in one go. What often happens then is that we end up with a flat side and we get frustrated, and um, we get end up with a flat side or, or something asymmetrical. Um, so as you know, what we will be doing is sketching out the object and taking our time to get that shape right before we attempt to shape. The other thing is when we look at this photograph, um, and I've given, I've got a color and a black and white in the attachment attached to this, uh, attached with this. Um, we're going to have, we want to make this look like one tomato is in front of the other. So how do we do that? Well, we're not going to be able to do that if we have the two tomatoes side by side like this, are we? So maybe what we need to do is we have one tomato in front and one tomato behind like this. But also we realize when we look at this that perhaps um, that isn't really what we want either. Maybe what we want to do is we want to put one tomato in front. We want to overlap them a bit, don't we? So if we want tomato in front and one tomato behind, that's what we kind of want to do. But that still isn't right. Why is that? Well, as we can see, the tomato that's nearer the front is bigger. So in order for our tomato to look in the correct proportions, we want to have our larger tomato at the front and our small tomato in the back. Okay, so we'll start drawing the actual object. Looking at my picture, there's a bit of a gap here um, at the end and the, the majority of the composition is over on this side and it's going to take up a good bit of the image. It's quite near the bottom, so I'm going to give myself a little mark for that tomato. I'm pretty happy. Maybe I'm going to go a bit further over. It's more than halfway. Maybe somewhere over here. But my other tomato is a little bit further up. How far? Maybe up about this, this side here. And I'm going to start by sketching, sketching roughly in, as you know. Taking our time here. And as you can see, I'm doing this really roughly to begin with. Now, I'm using my 4B pencil to draw this for you because I want you to be able to see what I'm drawing. But I would suggest that at this stage, you should just be using a HB pencil or a 2B pencil. Now look at that big mess I have made. You'll be looking at this thinking, Jeannie, this is gonna turn out to be a disaster. But what I'm doing is I'm keeping going and, and sketching this until I'm happy enough that it's the right shape that I want. And then what I will do is I will, um, go and I will rub out the lines that I'm not happy with. Now, looking at this, I'm going to get my other tomato going behind. And there's a little bit of a of a line here. You know, what I would try I want, um, just plug in my computer and then I'll be back to you. So continuing on, I'm going to draw this um, tomato behind and I'm going to draw the whole thing. Now, already I feel it's kind of going wonky, it's kind of hard to draw. So what I've drawn, I can see is very, almost more like a, a 
triangle or a cone. So I need to go back over this again and again get back and using big wide brush strokes. So the first thing I can see is far too low, isn't it? Because my smatter here must be higher up than this one. So I'm going to go up a bit higher here, a little bit higher here. And I'm just going to make it a little bit fatter, I would say, as well, because it's kind of very symmetrical, isn't it, the tomato? So now let's see, making it a little bit more roundy, definitely higher up than the one. Now that's going to help create the idea that it's higher up. I'm kind of getting happier with that now that I'm keeping on shading around that shape until I'm happy with. Okay, then when you look back at it, um, let's look at this. Hmm, is it possibly a bit too big? Do I need to make it a little bit smaller? Do I need to bring this up a little bit here? Maybe that's what I'll do. So the thing is, boys, what makes a good artist is being able to look and to recognize your mistakes, be able to see the proportion in relation one of one of them. So I'm a little bit happier with that now. It's a bit smaller and I'm just going to make this bottom a little bit less flat because remember, it's it's got a curved bottom. The bottom of the tomato was curved. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rub out all those extra lines and try and be left with a line that I'm going to be happy with. So that's how I would start off my drawing. Um, took me a few goals, boys. It's not as easy as it looks. And you have to keep a good eye on your position. If that one tomato was in front of the other, that one is bigger than the other, and also that you've gotten the um, the levels right, okay, that one is higher up than the other. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shade it. So first thing, I have two, I've got a colour drawing and a black and white drawing of the same picture in front of me. Um, I'm Myself, I would prefer to just, I can't be happy to work with the colour one, but I thought for you it might be easier to look at your picture in terms of the black and white tones and the grey tones that you're going to be using. And the first thing we're going to look at is, well, where is the light hitting in this picture? So you can see there's this light, especially hitting around the, the centre bit here, okay? And we're going to mark that in because we don't want to shade over that, that light part. So I'm going to... not going to be going near that that's going to be kept white there's another little bit here as well okay then on the other side it's a little bit closer i'm just going to look at it again in relation to this it's like a kind of a diagonal from here somewhere up here maybe somewhere around here maybe again look at me i'm using lots of sketchy marks until i'm happy enough with the circular shape i'm going to rub them out a little bit then and now i'm going to start drawing in the light, where the light is going to hit, okay? Again, like this, okay? With tone and shading, guys, I would say to you, the biggest um, and most important thing is patience. It takes longer than you'll think it's going to take to shade in a picture like this. I'm gonna put a little piece of paper underneath my hand when I'm shading so that my hand doesn't get all black here, is what usually, which is what often happens. And what I really want you to focus on, guys, is when you're shading, I have a nice sharp pencil. I'm using my 4B now for the pencil. A nice sharp pencil. I'm using the edge of the pencil. And what am I doing the whole time when I'm shading this? I'm echoing the shape of the object. I'm going to start a little bit lighter in here, actually. I started a little bit too dark. I'm going to start as light as I possibly can in around here so that. And then bringing it, bringing the shading out. Look 
look at the edge. Is it really dark at that edge up there? No, it isn't actually, because that's where the light is hitting. So actually this line here that I've drawn, I'm going to make it a little bit lighter again. I'm going to make it a little bit thinner and lighter because that's where the light is hitting. So I'm going to make go over that again and make it super light. Because that's where my light is hitting up here at the top. I'm going to fix it up a little bit up here. So, keeping a little invisible tiny line of light hitting this here. Yeah. Watch how I'm going around the shape. I'm keeping that curve the whole time. So I'm going to just show you how, in terms of my tone, I'm starting at this kind of um the the this part here where the the stem would have been, and I'm gradually my lines will be going out and out, getting bigger and bigger the whole time. We're keeping the three going to help to to show the three D quality. I'm doing this very 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 lightly because what I'm going to do is build up the tone bit by bit. So lightly, lightly to begin with, then going over. Some people like to do a circular motion when you're shading to kind of make it look very, very soft. But what you're basically doing when you're applying tone is you're starting off very light and then you're layering over and over and over to help make it get darker and darker. But it's gradually getting darker. It's not getting darker all at once and the whole time moving along the curve of the shape. So a lot of you will look at this now and probably think, oh well now, so she's shading one of the tomatoes. However, this is just the first bare start of the of the shading process. So we've got several layers of, of maybe tone to show you. Lighter, getting darker, getting darker as we go back. So it's important that we start to, to show that. So around here, I'm going to start bringing, layering over that tone again, a little bit darker. Looking in, keeping with my, very important, keeping with the curve of my tomato the whole time, keeping that curve going. And when I'm keeping that curve in my, the direction of my lines, what I'm doing is I'm going to be making this look 3D. Look at here, it's, it's darker to about here, but then it's kind of lighter over here. So we're dark on this side and the lighter side is over here. Although there is a little bit of a variation in the tone. It is getting a little bit darker. It's going out here, but it's going to be much darker in here. So we want to show that big difference. And keeping that good sweep of, of a curve going here to help make this look 3D. And this trick here, lads, is you keeping my pencil sharp. Look at the way I'm holding the pencil. It's not the typical way that you would hold your pencil when you're draw writing like this. It's actually holding it like um and and so that I can sketch. So I'm getting as I'm coming down here, I'm getting much much darker. And over on this side, it's very 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 dark. So we're going to get much much darker again. And the whole time I'm blending, I'm overlapping, I'm keeping a little bit of that going there, going back in, looking, overlapping it, and it's beginning to look a lot more 3D already. And it's a little bit lighter up here and darker down the side. So our absolute darkest quarter is kind of here, quite dark here, and then lightest here where the light is hitting. So I'm going to keep going here with the uh, shading of the other side just to show you. And this tomato, if anything, is a little bit lighter. So I'm using my lighter pencil, my 2B pencil here. And I'm going to start off really lightly shading. And again, starting out at this kind of stem part here, I'm going to just lightly sketch in the way the tone will be kind of radiating out in a kind of 
spherical manner from here. And what that's going to do is going to help this, this um, tomato look 3D. So I'm kind of basically really lightly putting in these almost guidelines for myself of how I know that the, the direction of the tone should go. And you know, as you can see in this one, as the time go, as your drawing goes on, you can't really even see any lines, but you have, are, because of the direction of your shape, um, of your shading, it's going to help it look 3D. So continuing on here. And looking at this tomato, there's a dark tone of, tomato, of, of, of darkness in here. I'm just going to mark that in on my drawing. Um, that this is kind of where the darkest patch here. And it's going to be much darker here because we need to make sure we can see the difference. So there's almost like a crescent of darkness coming up here. So we want to make sure we're going to show that. And we're going to have a real dark swish here. Probably isn't quite as dark as that bit over here, but it's still pretty dark. And I'm going to just go ahead and pause this and just do a little bit more shading. So the whole time, boys, my direction is going like this. And the whole time I'm overlapping. I don't, what I don't want to see, though, is I don't want to see a, 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 a case where you've got it shaded this part in here, shaded here, and then it just completely light here. They have to blend together. And the way you do that is by keeping on overlapping your tone, overlapping um, your tones lightly. So you're building it up gradually. And as you can see, it does take a while to do it properly.
and with, as you can see, it, can, it takes a good while to do it properly. Um, and I've started on the other, um, I've started to put in some of the background. Now, if you want to do the background, and I suggest this is how we're going to make it look 3D. So before we put in this background, it just kind of looks like it's floating in space. So it's very important to put in your horizon line. And the horizon or line in this particular, you know, is quite high up. Um, and it's very important to shade that in so that it looks like it's actually sitting on something as opposed to floating around in space. Um, I've used my black colouring pencil for this because it's a very dark shaded picture and we need something very dark in comparison. So I've used my black colouring pencil for this. Just to look at the background here again, guys, I just want to show you here in this back here, drop here. I don't really want to see a, a def definite line like this here. So I, it's important that I'm going to go back into my, my shading here and, um, and blend that all together. And all I'm doing to blend that all together is layering over and over, holding my pencil like this. Now, if I were not doing a demonstration video, I would be moving my paper around so that I can get the curve. But for the sake of this, I have to leave it all in one spot. But if I, if I weren't doing this, I would be moving this so that I could get my curve. And as you can see, even though you can't see the line the curved line the whole time I'm shading this I'm shading this in a curve it's layering it over and over and over again so that I'm kind of getting rid of that and I'm blending that together so that really blends together now as this has, as has gone on as you can probably see I'm afraid the light has deteriorated a little bit so what I will do boys is I'll send you a photograph as well of, of my completed picture and just to the important things to know for the light is coming from where your darker areas are and one other small thing here guys it's very important you, you don't see an, a big outline on my orange um, whatever the line on the outside of the orange is it should correspond to the the light of the dark of the tone of the orange shape So that's the finished piece. I'll send you a photo of it um, in better light. Okay, boys. Bye-bye. Happy drawing.